Hello everyone, how are you doing? I am Chloe Barker and I'm back with another board game review and this time it's The Adventures of Robin Hood from Cosmos Games and by Michael Menzel. So, Michael Menzel uh, did the Legends of Andor series and so uh, that was in my top 10 board games of all time last year when I did it for the Dice Tower and so that is a game I love. So I was very excited last year when I saw that this was coming out. It's a cooperative role-playing adventure board game and it has a campaign and very much in the style of other games like that it has a book that you go through and decisions that you have to make but this has got some really interesting unique selling points let's get into it so first of all I am not sponsored for this review, so these are my own views, this is what I think, but Cosmos did give me a free copy of this game, a review copy of this game, which is really amazing. They reached out on social media asking for more queer content creators, which I think is an absolutely amazing thing to do. And I reached out being like, hey, I'm a tiny board gamer, can I have a copy? And they were like, yeah, you know what, you can. I won't let that colour my review. I just wanted to be open and transparent with you all. Maybe the more in-depth role-playing puzzle board gamers, this is going to seem a little bit basic for them. But I think that this is a fantastic gateway board game. I think if you want to get people into role-playing games, this is the way to do it. I think this is a game that you could bring people in. Some of the missions, we found them challenging and we had whoop moments moments where we we're like oh my god i wasn't expecting that or we don't know where it is what's gonna happen it's the later missions where that really comes out i think that once you get onto four or five this game really starts to sing because it builds you up gradually so you it tells you don't read the rule book for the first game just jump into it and it gives you the basic setup which is great, but it means that it's only giving you a few mechanics at the beginning and it's very simple. And it adds a few more things as you go along. Even once it's added anything, it's not the most complicated game. It's still a very simple game. So I think that if I was taking this to a board game group, I would start on mission four or five, something along those lines. Yes, it ruins the campaign storyline, but if you're just playing it as a one-off, that's fine, right? And I think if I did that, then that's where people would get the most out of it. And with that, it's also a very quick game. It's a 60 minute game. So I can take it to a board game group. I have taken Above and Below, Near and Far, and also Legends of Andor to board game groups. And they were too long. It needs to be a bit quicker to over than that, to be perfectly honest. So this game would fit and I'd be able to introduce a lot of people to it. And we do have new board gamers there. So the idea that I can give them a game like this and introduce them to the genre is brilliant. I can't introduce them with Near and Far. I can't introduce them with Destinies. I could, but it might be a little bit intimidating. There's a lot going on. I certainly can't introduce them with Mage Knight, but that's pretty obvious, right? But this one, I feel I can. I feel like I can bring people into the genre. And it changes enough throughout the game, it evolves enough. Like I say, even at its end level, it's quite a simple game in terms of mechanics, but the puzzle becomes quite difficult. And this is what is interesting. So Legends of Andor, of course I'm going to compare it to that. It seems like this big epic adventure game, which it is, but it's all about a core puzzle. How do I get, how do I manage to do this in the amount of time? Legends of Andor and The Adventures of Robin Hood both feel like a time crunch. And the truth is that we didn't actually uh, successfully beat every game first time. So there's a couple that I actually played through again, which is good. It gives me extra data for this review, which I'll come to. But yeah, we didn't actually beat every mission first time round. And so I played this game two players and I played it three players. I also cheated. The game says two to four. I also played it solo a few times. Now, the reason that it isn't recommended for solo players is because sometimes you have to make decisions uh, when you come to the story. I just covered them and played it just to see how it would play. It's not recommended as solo, but I think you can do it. So yeah, little hack, I think you can play it single player even though it's not designed that way. I, I said the missions, it, I played through them a couple of times and it is, some of them, <laughs> some of them are really tight. But I thought that the second time I played through a mission, I thought, okay, well, I already know what's going on, right? It's already, 
I go to this person here and this person here. And then I read through the introduction for the second section. It's like, okay, you already know about this. So this time you've got to go and do this. And actually it was different. It was the same core principle for the puzzle, but what you were looking for and where was different. So, oh my goodness, I wasn't expecting that. And each game actually did add something that surprised me. <laughs> um, the last mission, nine, the first time I played through it, I was not expecting what you ended up having to do halfway through the mission. It was, I was not expecting that. It was a real big surprise. And me and my friend was just like, whoa, what? That's okay. Um, and then we failed that mission the first time around. But then the second time, we were actually playing it in a, it was a completely different game almost. It was different story. It was a different game. So just because there's the nine missions doesn't mean it feels like those nine missions are the same if you play each one a couple of times. And that's why I didn't want to rush this review because again, I think it's easy to base a review on two or three plays, but I wanted to, because this is a campaign and I saw that it was evolving, I wanted to really see. And what is interesting is that I read through the book. So if you're playing through the campaign a second time, there were actually new mechanics added again. So it actually keeps on changing. So that's really cool. So what are a few of the things about this game that you should like? So obviously I talked about the uh, the story and the way the story is put together. What I will say is that the storytelling feels a little bit dry. It isn't the most exciting. Now I already have a love of the IP because Robin Hood, I grew up with stories and movies and books around Robin Hood in the UK. But if you don't have that sort of you know affinity then you know you don't have that background the storytelling is dry you go and see someone and they're like do you want this and you say yes and that's the interaction it's not quite as rich uh, storytelling as say above and below or you know the red raven games or destinies maybe it doesn't need to be the stories come in this beautiful hardback book you could say well this is an introductory game but you know mice and mystics came out a good number of years ago now and that was pretty much aimed at young people and yeah that had really rich storytelling so it is possible to do it so uh, legends of andor was the same but legends of andor was a bigger game so it felt more epic this is a smaller condensed game so i don't know I th I th it would have been nice to have a bit more in-depth storytelling now i also talked about the rules and how you learn the rules as you go along so you have this one sheet that's like you do this you do this okay now play the game and so you go through the adventure book again it's this really nice hardback book and it gives you extra mechanics it gives you things and so you have these two ribbon bookmarks that you put in sometimes you needed three or four bookmarks sometimes i was missing stuff and sometimes they add in rules which i didn't know where they were like i didn't play it for a few weeks and i came back and i couldn't remember how something worked there wasn't a, a big thick rule book that covered absolutely everything and i think that that would have been really useful i like the way that it was easy and it introduced things slowly but uh, sometimes i wanted to be able to find things a little bit faster and i struggled with that so there's that there's that in terms of combat i think that this handles combat really really well i really like the combat happens because it's very basic very simple and is mitigatable that you're throwing cubes into a bag and you draw cubes so if you are fighting a guard you need one success you can draw up to three cubes one at a time if it's a purple it's a fail if it's a white it's a victory and there's things that you can do throughout the game where you add more purples or you add more white so you can really sort of change the makeup of the bag but you can still be unlucky and you can still be super lucky another thing you're pulling from the bag are these little discs these thin discs that sort out which guards are appearing on the board and so it adds a sort of certain amount of randomness to the board of which guards are going to appear and what i like is say a guard appeared on the last round if you pull that same guard again it goes away so there's this randomness with where the guards are going to be which i really like i thought that was really good and the other thing you're pulling from the bag is the turn orders so each of the four characters has a turn order the, the purple, which is bad, and then there's red, which is very bad, uh, but you don't know which order they're going to come in. Uh, but there's also this really cool thing where there's a white token where you pull that and all of your players get to go again. And that's great because that feels like, it feels like it's this, um, 
you know, band of mercenaries because all of a sudden you can coordinate. It's like, okay, this is what we're going to do on this go and everyone goes. That's really cool. But there's also a grey token which allows you to choose which one person is going to go. And that can be really useful as well for coordinating. If one person's trying to get from one side of the board to the other and you need all the movement you can get, you can do that. And movement's another glorious thing about this game. You have these three movement tokens for each character, but you can choose not to use all of them, which will allow you to throw a white cube into the bag. So you can, you know, move less distance but you can improve the odds of a successful combat. The, the movement is really easy because it's it's distance based, but you're not moving two cubes or three cubes, which we've done to death, but it's also not the sort of Warhammer 40K thing where you're moving 20 centimeters or 15 centimeters or whatever it is. You're moving these three tokens and so you can have them in a zigzag path. And so as long as you're not crossing trees, as long as you're not crossing buildings, you can use that to go where you're going and yet the rules say like you know if you're just touching uh, a character marker that you're trying to get to that's enough you know it doesn't have to be exactly to the millimeter precise which i like so i guess the last thing really to talk about is the board itself so the board is made up of dual layer boards and there are segments cardboard cutout segments and so this is really cool because sometimes one side of the cardboard, the segment is up. Sometimes you flip that, so the other side is up. And also you can remove the segment. So there's three different options for board setup or what happens based on each of these segments. And there are more of them than you think. Um, even on the very last game, the second playthrough of the last game, there was stuff that I was like, oh, I hadn't realized we'd not flip that over. This is brilliant. And also, say there's, and this is just a, you know, this is spoiler free, so just completely random um, example, which isn't in the game, but say there's a milkmaid. And so you see that there's a milkmaid and you go to them and it's chapter one and she'll give you some milk. And then the second time you go, she's like, do you want some information? Or do you want some bread? And so you make a choice then. But it's not the same as what it was in the previous chapter. And then on the third chapter, she's gone. And then on the fourth chapter, maybe she's an informant or a spy or something like that. All from the same token, depending on what chapter it is. So that's really clever. Yeah, so it means that, you know, just because you know that this person got you into the castle on one mission doesn't mean they're going to be able to do it on the next one, which is really cool. The pieces are really difficult to get out at first. But once you've removed them a few times, they become easier. But I've played through 10 games of this and none of them feel like they're falling out. And the ones to look at are the guards, which are the ones you're flipping over and over and over. And there's no reason why you couldn't have an expansion where it added in new segments for the board. So I guess bottom line, I don't think it's for necessarily hardcore role-playing gamers. But if you like um, a tricky puzzle, if you like uh, an interesting puzzly game and you want one that you can do quick, this is great. If you want to try and bring friends into the hobby who might be into role playing board games, this is a fantastic game for that. And I think you can have a lot of fun playing this with a good group of friends. But I think this would work really well with my niece. I think it would work really well with my youth group. Like I say, I won't necessarily start at mission one, I'll probably start mission four or five, where it's a little bit more interested and a little bit more going on and a little less likely to win definitely highly recommend this game like i say it might not be for your game group and certainly it's not a game that i'd be playing with my usual hardcore uh, role-playing board game group but i could definitely play it with uh, like I say my youth groups my niece and even my mom you know so yeah great activity great game thank you again cosmos for giving me uh, a review copy of the game and until next time i'm clara bye